Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the 296 GTB. This is a car that's going to be available as part of the Italian royalty rerun. Uh, some players, particularly newer players, may not have this car. And you may have the gold keys to pull it, so let's talk about how good or bad this car is. As a live racer, which, you know, we're always looking at possible live racers in this game. This car is not bad. Most people are more aware of the 296 GTS knowing that it is a good car. And sometimes we forget that the GTB um, hardtop version is basically the same car. Sure, there's gonna be a little bit of difference ultimately, but generally speaking, at the same upgrades, same tune, you're gonna come within a few EVO of each other, if not identical. So. What I have set up here is a no stage 6 setup for this car in a particular lobby, which is the 11 uh, 6 lobby that it generally lands in. So if you leverage stage 6s, the EVO will jump up a lot. I can show you real quick. With a one point jump, you can get up to a 200 plus point jump in EVO. So the car does prefer to have stage 6, particularly transmission and body, but even without it, it doesn't make the car not viable. It's just not as strong as with the stage six. So instead of leveraging stage six trans, I'm actually utilizing some stages of turbo intake and body to make up for that lack of points uh, that I would normally get from transmission. Of course, you can end up with a little bit higher performance point versus uh, I could probably get the same Evo at a lower performance point, same performance. Uh, with higher EVO if I leverage transmission. But regardless, without stage six, and most new players when you first get the car would be without stage six, the car is still viable in live. Now that we know what the parts are, let's take a look at the actual tune. The tune is of course real simple, right, left, left. And this is probably the simplest way to tune a car and you always prefer a car that can tune this way because it makes it easy for you, okay? Can you tweak it a little bit? Sure, you can tweak it a few points uh, by doing this, which lowers that slightly, but it's not really even worth the effort to fine tune. Uh, this five points, three points, whatever it is, won't make a difference in lobby matchmaking that much. Now, if you can jump 100 points, of course, that's a big change. So let's jump into live and uh, make a few runs. Now, the 11, the 1128 dyno, the reason why I set it to that is because it'll generally push you into the 1140 11 6 lobby with lobby advantage. If you want to know what that means, look up one of my videos where I explain what it is and why it works for live racing. Understand that other cars will have similar possibilities, particularly good cars like the new Elite uh, 3, uh, 400Z uh, and some of these other cars. And then you have cars that may not have it something like this these cars generally are pretty dominant in slower lobbies because it has a glitch tune that allows it to run super low 500 performance point at super high evo but can i take this guy on and actually do well well yes i mean sure we could both end up pushing each other but generally speaking i can push my car through and give him a run for his money do I always want to do this? Probably not. I mean, by running a 11-1 on a 11-2A dyno, I am actually beating my own dyno. Um, although, the Regera also beats its dyno by about 2 tenths to 3 tenths, um, depending on... Oh, he bumped. Now, that's the problem. If I do it like this and I race that hard, there's a good chance my car will be the next to bump. What I need to do then is to run it slower and keep it in this lobby. And the lobby should still be 11.6. It should not be um, the 11.3 or 4 lobby just yet until I move a lobby up from running too fast, right? Uh, let's take this guy on. So again, these LCs, uh, if they shift properly, also beats Dino by about 2 tenths. So you got to keep all this in mind when you're racing everybody uh, that even though lobby should be x um, cars can beat dyno so it'll run to two tenths three tenths four tenths under x or they're poorly tuned and they're in there with even worse dyno than you imagine 
which is always a good thing because it makes it easier for you to win without running as hard. So again, the GTB is a pretty quick car um, and I can control it pretty easily. And then I can run a slower run to my dyno and still do quite well. Uh, right here, I don't know why everybody's called Gamma, don't ask me, it's a typical glitch. Uh, 11.6. So the lobby is still more likely to be 11.6 to 11.4 than it is to, um, oh, I'm gonna get kicked now. So unable to connect the server is never a good thing. That means you got kicked. I got the red Wi-Fi. This is typical right now. Uh, a lot of people are having this problem that the uh, game randomly disconnects from the server. That's probably because Natural Motion is so busy updating paid events into the server that Every time they're messing with something, we get an unstable server. A little bit in and out usually reconnects it, but the downside here is that I may have gotten bumped to a faster lobby. I'm probably not gonna see the same guys now. And I don't know, oh, well, I do. Actually, no, not too bad. I moved a little bit, I tweaked a little bit, but I didn't get bumped fully out of this lobby yet. But Frankie here, again, has a card I can run pretty quick. I have to be careful what I'm gonna do here because I don't want to end up bumping myself out of contention here with this car so early after the build. But, um, you know, again, I'm watching him come up. Ah, I'm gonna slow down too much. Don't, oh well. A uh, little too much there, but again, still in the 11, 6, 11, 7 range, which is where I wanna be with this car. Once you learn how to control the car, you can run it pretty well. Uh, no, Rookie didn't. I thought he challenged me, but then he changed his mind. Okay, this is a good card. So yes, I could race him, but chances are we're gonna end up running 11-3, 4 to uh, finish our races. The other guy next to him is a good car. If he raced me, this one is a good car as well. Oh, looks like CSR is on the, oh, he's challenged me. The, the problem with iOS is sometimes my device and iOS device have a problem. You can only challenge one way. Um, but he rechallenged and I was able to accept, so here we go. Okay. Now, I'm gonna watch him. That car is one of those gear skippers in the beginning. And then it starts to pick up speed like this. Like, see how it's coming up real fast on the end? And keeping it close is always my go. It's just the way I play, but you know, you don't have to keep it that close if you're not comfortable with controlling your car. But this car, again, did pretty good run there. Let's see, he's a swapper. It could be that he gave me the first run uh, with a slower run. Let me see what he runs this time. I'm not gonna push him. Um, I'm just gonna run it kind of normal here uh, and see if he what he runs if I let him kind of catch me, but I'm still not. Yeah, let's see what he runs there. Eleven six. So he's he's pretty steady on eleven six. I'll give him another one or two swaps, uh, but then I have to move on since I'm recording. But anytime you see that symbol, uh, and as I've said in my swap videos, that means they're a swapper. That means they want to go win loss, win loss with you to help make quick RP. It's actually a very effective method. Uh, some people don't like it because they feel like it's not real racing. But to me, hey. I need the RP, and if a guy's willing to swap, I'm not gonna deny him. Um, I'm gonna give him a quick uh, small tip to let him know that I, I can't keep swapping. He knows it's his turn to win, so generally he understands this is a tip, not a uh, not a way to try to trick him into losing money. Okay, so I'm gonna keep my car slow, make sure he wins, and then I can move on. I mean, this is one of the ways you tell someone I, I'm done swapping is, Throw a tip up. Now, the tip should be relative to how long you've been swapping, right? If I only did two races, I'm not gonna give him 200K bet. He's gonna go, oh, this guy is now trying to get my money. I'm not, they're gonna refuse you. Some people refuse tips anyway, but a small tip, the longer you swap, the bigger the tip can be. Okay, this guy, Warblood, he's gonna have a really good tune on here. Now understand in 11, two, oh wait, that's a different car. Well, that changes things. This car is beatable. Uh, in 11.2, that, that LC500 is not. That would run 11, I mean, 10 nines in here. 10 A's if they set it up right, 10 seven if they're really good. This 
guy here will still run probably a 11 flat, but that's something I can keep up with. Whoa, he slowed down a lot. Okay, so he didn't want to push his car to bump himself. So what he did is he realized I'm catching up and said, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. Okay, I'm just gonna let him win so I can keep my car viable. So that's a smart move. Uh, veteran players who's playing this game long enough to understand why we do this will, okay, so he gave me that race. I'm gonna give him this race because it's only fair, right? I'm not trying to push him into the point where he's gonna bump his car, just like he does. He obviously doesn't want to bump my car either. So we're gonna do another one where I'm just gonna run it uh, a little bit slower and not push him so hard. Okay, so, and again, I'm just here to demonstrate this car. I'm not trying to uh, push the car and kill the car this early in the game. It's just starting to be um, a racing thing. So 11.5. I would stick around and, and swap with him, but I think this video's gone on long enough and I've already made my point. I'm gonna go ahead and call it from here. But the 296 GTB, just as good as the GTS, because it's basically the same car and therefore you can use this car as a live racer. As you can see, it does run well it dynos in the 11.3 11.28 range right here it'll run under that to do 11 ones um, and it'll lobby generally well in 11.6 provided you don't keep pushing your car i mean if you go into lobby and start running 11 ones right away yeah you're gonna kill the car okay not as many ferraris in the old days that were good in live but now we have a lot including this one which is actually one of the lesser uh, live racers in the overall scheme of Ferraris, but for a Gold Star Ferrari, this is worth getting if you like Ferraris and you want a Ferrari live racer. Fusions are not too hard to get for Ferraris. In the absolute worst case scenario, and you have cash more than you have keys, you could buy the F12 from the dealership and strip them for the Fusions, which will allow you to get Fusions pretty easily. Of course, the game is really slow to uh, transfer to the um, to the dealership. Where's where's my Ferrari? Ugh, I can't. Oh, here we go. So I want to show you guys the car I'm talking about, so you're not just hearing it without seeing it. The F12, and there are a lot of Ferraris in the game, but most of them, unfortunately, isn't that great. But here you go. But it's a mill in a pop. Still, you you get it. You can get. You know, maybe put like. I wouldn't put any upgrades on it. The cost to benefit of getting one extra fusion uh, in cash just isn't worth it. But if you have the cash, you could buy this guy, strip it, and you can build that uh, 296 over time. So the 296 is a good car, a uh, good live racer. It's also worth mentioning the other car that you can get is the SF90 Stradale, which is right here. I have the purple star version, that's going to be the gold star version, which is slightly less uh, fusions than the purple star version, but the SF90 Stradale is not as low performance point high EVO as the 296. So between the two, I personally would, if I only have 70 gold keys, I would personally go for the 296 over the Stradale as my initial one to shoot for. And I am going to be doing that, I think, on my second account, which surprisingly still doesn't have this car, even though it's a milestone car. That means I must have skipped that season or something. But anyway, that wraps up this video. I hope that I've addressed all the concerns and questions you normally would have with this car as far as live racing is concerned. If you have more questions, ask me in the comments. I try to respond as quickly as possible. If you like the video, leave a like. Share with your friends, then it'll get more views because people would actually be interested in finding out and get knowledge about the car. If you like my channel and like this kind of videos, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.